in my continued attempts to decorate my new house. This week I've made an art piece made out of lots of wooden blocks. Lots and lots of wooden blocks. So yes, something slightly different this week. In my continued pursuit to decorate my new house, I was actually looking for a couple of modern art pieces until I worked out how much these things cost. So there's only one thing for it, and that is to do it yourself. Before I show you how to do it, I have to say, this isn't my original idea. You can see this on the internet. This is just my version with some tips and tricks along the way. It's all made out of two by two plain timber. And the one I've made here is 1.2 meters or four foot wide by a couple of foot high. So let's go back a couple of days before I cut all these blocks to show you the base that they're sitting on. It doesn't really matter what board you use as a backer. As long as it's flat, the wood will stick to it and it's not too heavy. I first mark a perimeter a couple of inches in from each side, then glue and fix a batten along this line on the back of the board to give it some strength. So that's the base or the backing board of this piece done. And all I've done is glued and pinned some battens on the back of this MDF. And the reason I've done that is twofold. First of all, when I put this finally against the wall, once it's finished, I don't want it to be flat against the wall. I want it to have a little bit of a shadow gap at the back and that will make that happen. That's why I've just inset it maybe sort of 50 mil, a couple of inches. And secondly, I'm trying to keep the weight down. I sort of realized this is gonna turn really heavy, really quickly. So the backing board, I'm trying to keep as thin as possible. This is six millimeter MDF. And the problem with that is obviously the thinner you get, the more flexible it gets. So therefore I've stiffened it up with that batten at the back. But I have sort of really feel that this is going to get very heavy very quickly. So I'd have liked to have used sort of 18 mil MDF, but I think that's going to, just going to take it over the top. So what I need to do now is start getting on and cutting quite literally hundreds of blocks. So each block is going to have a perpendicular end and then an angled end. So if I just use one mitre saw, I'm going to have to keep changing it between each cut a straight cut and then a, a mitre or bevel cut and then back to a straight cut which is going to take forever because I think there's about 400 blocks I'm going to need but I just had a bit of a brainwave I've actually got two mitre saws because I've got my cheap little one that I reviewed a couple of months ago so I think if I set up two saws then I can have one set up at an angle one set up straight so I can cut straight and then an angle and straight and an angle it's still not perfect it's, it's still going to take a bit of time but I don't think there's any choice although I've got two mitre saws I've only got one shop vac so this is going to be a messy process with lots of sawdust being produced I'm cutting here at a 15 degree angle on the trend saw, which looks to be about right. This timber is two by two planed all round, which comes out to be 44 by 44 millimeters. So for a 1.2 meter by 600 piece, four foot by two foot, I need just under 400 blocks in total, which I'm gonna cut in varying lengths, and I think is gonna take me about an hour and a half.
Well, hey, so it looks like I've at least got enough blocks. It finally worked out to 14 by 28 blocks, which is just under 400. I've got a few left over just in case I need them when I'm sanding and painting, just in case, and it was just to finish up the little bit of timber that I was cutting. Now, with these blocks, some of them I've cut fairly small and some of them I've cut fairly big. So I've got a variety of sizes in between. Now the small ones work out to be 25 mil or one inch thick. And the bigger ones are about 60 millimeters, two and a quarter inches. With the idea that the smaller ones are going like around the outside, the taller ones are in the middle. So you get like a 3D contoured effect. However, I don't know whether I made, should have made them more pronounced. So the smaller one should be smaller and the bigger one should be even bigger. I don't really know. It's a bit of a suck it and see. Anyway, the next thing I need to do is to sand all of these because I do need to sit as close together as possible. And on, obviously on each one, I've got ragged edges. That's before I start even thinking about priming. <laughs> All of the blocks now have splinters on each face from the mitre saw that need to be removed. And this type of bench top sander is the perfect tool to do it. If you're getting into woodwork, I would highly recommend this as one of your early purchases. This type come in lots of different makes, but are all essentially the same sander. This one is a Ferrex from Audi, but I'll put a link in the description for the same type that you can buy through Amazon. As soon as I start priming the 400 odd blocks, I realize it's gonna be tricky painting them without leaving fingerprints on the faces. So I put together a tool for holding the one side that doesn't get painted. Primitive, but cheap, quick and effective. Then with a mechanism made to remove the block from my spiker thing, it means I don't even have to touch the block at all and the smudge the paint with fingerprints. After painting a few blocks, I upgraded my spiker thing to version two, which had two screws to hold the blocks better without any chance of them spinning. Even with this in place, it's clear that painting 400 blocks is going to take ages. So I thought I'd try spraying them with my paint sprayer. To stop them moving from the air that's coming out the sprayer, I firstly pinned the set to a board and then sprayed. After setting all this up, it just didn't really work because by the time the sides were covered properly, the top had so much paint on it, which meant I'd have to remove it. And then the whole thing took longer than just painting by hand. So I resigned myself to a couple of hours of painting and just went back to using the brush. With everything primed, I sorted the blocks for size, roughly laying them out and then splitting them into the different colors I'm gonna paint them. So I have the right ratio of small and large blocks for each color, roughly. To paint them, I used acrylic paint both spray paint and by brush. And although spray paint out of a can is quicker, it's not perfect and not nearly as easy as you think. Firstly, it's expensive, around nine pounds for a tin. Secondly, you really need to spray outside as the vapors are just overwhelming. And if you try to do it inside, these vapors linger all day, making the workshop unusable.
And finally, I estimate that only around 40% of the paint actually hits the piece you want to paint. Most either misses completely or is blown away by the wind. So using paint out of a can like this is not really as straightforward or as perfect as you may think. Before I start gluing the blocks to the backing board, I work out where I want the fixings to end up behind a single block and drill. I can then sort out my fixings on the wall I'm going to put it up on before the thing gets too heavy. But to cover myself and make sure I don't put it at the wrong height, I enlist some help. Where do you think? Go up. No, down. Down a bit more. No, up. Up a wee bit more. No, it's at an angle. Yeah, down a bit more. A bit, wee bit more. A bit more. Yeah, that's about it. Finally, after lots and lots of painting, it's time for assembly, which I do initially without glue on a separate board, which means I can move things around until I'm happy with the layout and everything's looking right. So after many hours painting blocks, I've now got to the point where I can actually stick some of them down. And you would have seen that what I've done is I've actually laid out everything as it wants to be, but on another board. That means I can change things around, adjust it, work out exactly what I want. And then I've spent about an hour doing that, just making sure I'm happy. And now all I have to do is transfer that to the main board and then just stick them down. One of the hardest things of this little project here is that I'm an engineer, so I like to do things right. And this is a bit artistic and there is no right or wrong. So I go round in circles trying to work out how I should lay out these blocks. And that's not really what I'm used to doing. So I, I will admit that it's taken me longer than it should have done just because there's no obvious right and wrong. But anyway, I'm on the home stretch and this is probably the most fun bit anyway, it's just sticking blocks in. So I think this is gonna take me about an hour, then it'll dry, let it dry for an hour or two and hopefully we can get it on the wall. So I am really happy with this. It's gone up on the wall really nicely and definitely drilling those holes before I put the blocks on really helped because now it's quite heavy to say the least. I'm so glad I picked the colours I did and the metallic blue and gold really set the piece off. And what I've just noticed is depending on where the light is coming from, the whole thing changes because of the shadows and the glistening from that metallic paint. The other thing I really like is the way it's got invisible fixings, just with four blocks in each corner. I'll put some tape, double-sided tape on here, but I don't think I really need to because once it's in there, it doesn't actually want to go anywhere. The biggest problem I have is if I ever take it off the wall, remembering which blocks are the ones that come out. 
Maybe it'll never move again. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe something that you can do just for a few pennies yourself in the future. Remember, subscribe, Patreon, all that sort of stuff, and I will see you next time.